Welcome to another video. I am the Starman. Now, have you ever been interested in buying a telescope but you haven't got an absolute scooby doo about where to start? Well, you've come to the right place. Yeah, so here's a typical advert in an Astro magazine for telescopes, and you're thinking, what on earth is all this about? So, in this video, I want to show you an ideal starter type telescope, and that is the refractor telescope. And here we have a refractor telescope and this is the type of telescope that I think would be the ideal starter scope as the very very simple in design the classic design of telescope the light comes in the front goes through a series of lenses and comes out here where the eyepiece is here so this type of telescope is pretty much the same as a telephoto camera lens so these come really really long and, and quite stubby. This is kind of like a medium size refractor telescope. It has an 80 millimeter aperture on the end and it has a focal length of about 550 millimeters. So in general terms it's fairly short focal length for astronomy terms. The bigger telescopes tend to use mirrors and things like that to get much longer focal length. So this is more of like a the sort of thing that you would use to look at large objects like the Orion Nebula or the Moon or something like that and they're absolutely perfect for putting your camera on. Okay so let's take a closer look at the telescope and you can see I've got it on a bog standard uh, camera tripod with a pan and tilt and this is how you'd normally use one of these telescopes because they're a very short focal length and uh, you basically just point them where you want them to and I've just stuck the finder on it as well this is what you use to point towards the object in the sky there's a red dot in there and that helps you to find what you're looking for inside the uh, the eyepiece because sometimes you, it can be a struggle to find stuff it's an 80 millimeter telescope which means it has an 80 millimeter aperture at the front or about three inches something like that this is also a lens hood which retracts like that and that helps to stop the lens fogging up if it's ever quite dewy out and uh, coming back here you can see we've got like a tripod foot that's like a st standard tripod foot for a camera that i've had to put this bar on it as well so that it fits on my telescope mount uh, this is the focuser here so when you turn this knob here there's another one on the other side and can you see how the, the thing comes out there and that's how you focus the telescope and uh, th this this little one here is a fine-tuned focuser so when you get close to focusing with that one you can then use this one to, to fine-tune your focus and then it won't jump around like it it does do with the big one and on the end here we've got this thing here which is a 90 degree star diagonal this basically means that you can look through the eyepiece at a easier angle you don't have to strain yourself by looking straight through like that you can also get a 45 degree angle fine so you look through it like that instead so there's a there's different ways in which you can look through the telescope okay so we're now looking at the front of the telescope and i just thought i'd mention what all these words and numbers mean because it does look really really confusing well it's uh, fairly simple to point out that it's made by william optics of the usa and the model number is a Zenith Star 2 ED, which stands for extra dispersion. This is something that you might see on a telephoto camera lens if you have one. And doublet. Well, that's another thing as well, because these telescopes, they come with different lens groupings. The cheapest ones only have a single lens grouping, and they're called acromats. Uh, this is known as an apochromat, and this has a double lens group grouping. Now, most apochromatic tend to be triplets, and they have three lens groupings and they're more expensive but William Optics have managed to make an apochromatic out of a doublet in this particular telescope. Just coming around here we have an aperture here of f6.8 now if you've got one of those long telescope lenses like the Sigma 150 to 600 is it you might notice that the numbers on that one go up to something like 6.8 when you're at 600 mil so that's very similar to the uh, the same thing that you would get on a camera lens and as you can see here we've got a focal length this is a focal length 545 millimeters which astronomy terms telescopes is fairly short was we're fairly wide filled with this with this telescope and that's why i think it's a great starter scope because we're not getting too close to stuff we want to start wide if we can and up here we've got 80 millimeters the width this is the width of the 
objective lens. Okay, so as you can see, I've got an eyepiece on the end of this telescope, and this is a 20 millimeter eyepiece, which is a fairly wide field eyepiece for a telescope. Now, I'm gonna tell you how you can find out how much this will magnify the object you're looking at. So say you're looking at the moon, and you've got a 20 millimeter eyepiece on this telescope, I can tell you that it will magnify the moon 27 times and the reason for that is the telescope is 540 millimeters roughly i've rounded it off to 540 millimeters now 20 goes into 540 27 times and that's how you get a magnification of 27 times using a 20 millimeter eyepiece okay so i've now got this other eyepiece and this is a nine millimeter eyepiece but let's pretend it's a 10 millimeter just to make it easier to to do the calculations you can see there that the aperture on the eyepiece is a bit narrower than on the the 20 millimeter one so if i put that in there now what will happen is uh, that will magnify the moon 54 times because if this is a 10 millimeter eyepiece it goes into the focal length of this telescope 54 times because it's a 540 millimeter telescope. The smaller the number on the eyepiece, the more powerful it will be. But at the same time, you have to be careful that you don't use too small an eyepiece, too powerful, that the subject becomes a little bit too dark because the subject will be darker when you're using a smaller eyepiece. And now if you're interested in putting the camera on, like I've got this Nikon D5100 camera here, which is a getting on a bit now but you can see here I've got this um, thing on, on, on it here in place of a lens and this is called a T adapter and, and ring and you can see here this allows they're not expensive they're only about 15 or 20 pounds um, you can get them on on eBay or whatever and basically that allows you to put the camera I've taken the thing off for the eyepiece there as you can see and it simply just slots into there like that and that's all you have to do and then you're ready then to point the camera up to the moon or, or whatever and remember that you use these to focus you haven't got an auto focus so you have to use these things here and that's really all you have to do to connect a camera up a dslr to this type of telescope so there you go that was a look around the refractor telescope the type of telescope that i think is an absolutely ideal starter telescope for those wishing to get into astronomy just for looking at things like the moon and stuff like that or for attaching your camera absolutely ideal really easy to use short focal length and not that expensive either really and you can use them on a simple tripod you don't have to have like a fancy go-to mount or anything like that so yeah that's a quick look around the refractor telescope now in the next video in this series i will be talking about the reflecting telescope a little bit more complicated than the refractor more powerful i'll be talking about the reflecting telescope in the next video in this series try and avoid the ones that you see in the supermarkets because those big long ones and they have the boxes that say 100 times 200 times all that rubbish try and avoid one of those you want to get something like this one here anyway i hope you like the video i hope it's been useful to you and if you do hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and I will see you again next time.